What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, hopefully the microphone's barely seen. I can't move it anywhere else. Uh, we're checking out Cosmic DE, so Cosmic Desktop Environment, which is being made by System 7C, System 76, who also, you know, makes Pop OS. And uh, it's got a lot of cool updates here to go over. One is resizing windows. When resizing a window with your keyboard in Cosmic DE, a hint will appear containing shortcuts for growing and shrinking the window. Tiled windows aligned with the one being resized will scale to keep the layout in alignment. Hey, just like Windows. No, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, they clearly did this on Pop OS itself because that is not what the DE looks like. This is what the DE looks like. So far, it's just standardized and it looks pretty cool and I really wish I can get rid of this. No, it won't let me. Um, another thing is they're looking to implement the wallpaper settings. It's not implemented at the moment. It does not work. No matter how much they want to tell you that it works, it, it doesn't work. Uh, but I can't wait for this one. So wallpaper settings and scaling designs for wallpaper setting panels have been implemented in Cosmic. The notifications daemon is now working. Is it? It's currently in development. This tool allows you to applicants like notifications, yada, yada, yada. Okay, cool. Fractional scaling, Cosmic text. Let's just jump right into it. This is not going to be a short video by any means, okay? And uh, what I mean by that is to get this thing installed and running is a huge huge pain in the butt especially about that another desktop environment so honestly our best bet would be to install another desktop environment and that in itself is uh you know slightly is that actually popping up in the bottom i'm afraid i'm going to crop the screen and i don't want to do that let me just, here's what I do sometimes when I'm making a video. I will literally just swap my main screen so that you guys can see no taskbar. Now, normally, normally I would be doing this on an actual desktop, like not in a VM, but for right now, it's i couldn't record i couldn't show you the desktop environment there's no ability to record using obs it can't capture a window you can't even take screenshots it's annoying all right let's do this the simple easy way we're just gonna go and do uh arch install non-caps all right so we have a 64 gig drive good disk layout yeah, so you can actually wipe the drives and you know, you know what? No, we're gonna we're gonna use uh, System MD boot. Yeah, we're gonna call this Cosmic Arch, and I'm I'm muting that right now. By the way, that annoying beeping sound. I, I apologize greatly for that. Cosmic Arch. Root password. Done. User account. Add a user. Uh, me. Yeah. Yeah. I am a pseudo user. Done. Profile. Desktop. Now the nearest thing currently still is GNOME. And we're going to just choose VM. Type wire, please. Additional packages. Uh, Git and base devil and dev tools. Good. Network configuration on time zone slash LFX. And we are going to enable the multi live repos. That's it. See you once the installation is done. And we're booted into GNOME. Okay, so we're back. And Arch Linux is installed. God, I missed System ND boot. It was so much faster than Grub will ever be. And it's just like, we're in. All right. The real question here is, 
Do we have any acceleration? And if not, well, we don't. God damn it. And this has been a bug lately. There we go. Okay. Don't need to open up a map right now. I need to actually go and start the VM tools. So it did not install the tools during installation. Like I told it to. Yep, these are just the uh, the main issues that you come across when you're working with VMware. It's not VMware's fault per se. It's just it's just somehow how certain things go. Uh, I gotta remember the command. So we gotta do an evil faster compiling for everything. And we're working with eight cores inside of this VM. 16 gigs of RAM. And next, we're going to be just doing a simple command. I like using yay. Does it not let us just paste it? Can I not like... I'd probably have to restart the friggin' uh, VM to get that done, won't I? So, we're going to just reboot that real quick. And it shouldn't take no time at all to get back in. Uh, I guess the whole copy and pasting into a VM thing happens after first boot. Hopefully. Because I have a single command here that I want to use. Come on. Can I like... Okay. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. No? Damn it. What is it doing? Why does it do this? Like, fix your Waylon bugs, huh? There we go. So there it is. There's the one command. Ready? Gonna clone gay, which gives you access to the AUR. And then it's going to end up installing, um, sorry, downloading, compiling, doing everything it needs to grab the cosmic uh, desktop environment. There's a single all-in-one package called Cosmic Epoch. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really sure. And it's just going to grab everything you need and make it work. And to show you that, what we're going to do is I'm going to just boop, 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 boop. All right. And we're going to hit yes for yay. And just hit enter, 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 enter again. I don't need to touch anything. And as you can see, it's doing its thing. I almost forgot. Do we need to... How do you... I don't think there's a way to edit this uh, VM. Is there? No, there's not. Not VM, sorry, the terminal window. I was going to change the way that it looked for you guys, but I think this is fine. So here it goes, it's grabbing all of its crates. This is what Rust does, it has crates. And it's gonna install everything it needs. This literally is an all-in-one command and I will put it in the description below for you guys. And it's also hopefully going to be merged in to the official repo here soon. This guy was trying to do his best to make this a thing, but his way was literally just this with no information at all on how to get Paru. So I added yay, and I added Paru, and showed him how to do the three lines. So instead of it looking janky, it ends up looking really clean. Because you want things to look clean. We are gonna be doing a video very soon on RPCSX. Uh, I'm just waiting for the developer DH to implement an FPS counter in the title bar where I hoped he would put it. He says he's going to do it, so I know he's going to do it. Uh, I have rewritten the readme for that. Like, you would not believe. It looks so clean. So easy for everyone to just go and install. Okay, so... Pop Launcher is installed. And now it's going to grab every single repo that is needed for the Cosmic DE to even function. 
And of course, we are possibly going to be needing pop icons. I'm not sure. I will be installing the pop wallpaper so that we don't miss out on anything. So I'm going to let this do its thing. It will automatically do everything possible. And then it's going to notify you when it needs to install every little thing. So it's an all in one process. I made it as simple as possible for you guys watching. Well, guys, it's been seven years since I started this video. I'm joking. And we're finally done. As you can see, everything's installed and finished. And that whole time that we were away, I went and did this to my desktop because I could not stand the ugliness, which is stock gnome. Anyway, let's log out. See if we can just log out and uh, jump right into Cosmic D. And it's right there. Good, good, good. Now, hopefully everything is there and everything looks exactly like I expected to. It has a wallpaper. What? It has a clock? It still says pseudo app installed when you click the clock. Oh, that shit's hilarious. All right, let's head into settings. And we head into wallpaper. Oh my god, wallpaper actually shows. Okay, apparently I compiled it wrong the last time. We're gonna go with this one and we're gonna allow it to... It doesn't say... Stretch? Stretch. I don't know. I'm gonna go with that stretch. Down here there is supposed to be a dock it's right there look there's there's nothing there if you want to open up the um start menu or whatever you want to call it it's windows a button and if you want to add things to the dock unfortunately you're gonna to have to open them and hit favorite yeah it's not really there yet another thing the reason why we installed gnome so that we could have utilities such as the ability to access our files, which could actually be opened by pressing, I believe what is Windows F or G? I don't remember. Oh. Okay. Windows? Behave yourself. Yeah. I guess that's not going to actually open, is it? Let's try it again. Nope. Okay. Um... Windows T button should open up the terminal. Anything? No. So what if we go to utilities or system and open the console that way? Yeah. It was not this buggy in a VM uh, in Unreal hardware. This is definitely a little more buggy than I'm used to. Let's click high performance. Can we click high performance? We can't. Batteries and settings. Oh, oh shit, it opened. Look at that. So let's favorite that so we don't lose it. Now I'm going to show you how to edit this so you guys can mess around. You're going to hit control H in here. You're going to go to config, cosmic. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make my dock an actual dock. So I'm going to open this with text editor. Is it going to open? Is it going to open at all? It is. Oh. There's the terminal. Favorite. Great. We have the terminal open. This is very weird and oddly laggy when it comes to... Uh... I should have left that open. God darn it. Can I like... I kind of use that to edit every single file. That's annoying. Now we just got to wait another 10 minutes for the text editor to open, I guess. And I noticed that this thing does not like to share. All right, so I'm going to find a way to get a text editor to open. Most likely I'm going to have to install gedit, but that's fine. Okay, so console window opened back up twice. And then text editor opened. See this? I don't want this. This basically is telling you that uh, it's not allowing me to get rid of it. 
What happens if I hit save? No. See, that's a problem. So we're going to do nano. And we're just going to drag and drop that in. And hit enter. And we're just going to delete it. Doing this. And hitting Y. It's going to make your dock pop up on the bottom. So now your dock is forever open. And we actually do this. We CD into this. We hit LS. We're able to edit everything else because honestly, I don't trust this thing. I like G edit a whole lot better. So what if we do? Should have never ever replaced G edit. G edit was amazing. Thank you. So if I go G edit, is it gonna open up? It's not. Okay. This is a whole lot more stable on real hardware. This is annoying. So LS, where are we going next? Let's go back to dock. So CD. Each one of these has its own settings. So CD V1. LS again. Let's actually hit clear and then LS. Next, I'm going to want to edit the anchor gap so we're going to change this from true or false to true and then it does this so now it looks like it's floating we're going to want to edit the border radius next so nano border radius i'm going to set this to 20 and i'm going to hit yes i'm just showing you all the things you can do now you have a rounded dock you set it to 25, it's even more rounded. So if we go back, set it to 30. Look at that. That that looks ugly though. We're not doing that. 20 is fine. Don't need more than 20. Okay. Now we're gonna do can we get out of here, please? Thank you. Uh what's the other one that we need to do? We can change how transparent it is. Let's make it six. Hitting control S apparently inside of nano makes it save. Did not know that. Great. And if we CD out of there, we clear that. We can also go up and change the panel. So we hit LS and I believe that this is the panel right here. I know that this, there's two of them, but this is the one that we want. This is the one with the settings. So if we CD in here, slash V1, hit LS, can on anchor it. Uh, we can change the border radius. So what I'm going to do is change the border radius. So nano, actually we can just do this. Border radius. So we're gonna set that to 20. Now it's rounded. Kinda like you'd get in something like Pico OS. And I think I broke it. There we go. Ah, another thing I believe. Does anchor gap do anything? I kind of want to decouple this and see what happens. It does. We can completely decouple it. That's great. Next, expand edges. Basically, we can make it into a dock if we wanted to. Um, we can change the transparency and size. So let's do size. So right now it's extra small. Let's just try it small. Yeah, so it gets bigger. Can we type XSS? Or is it extra S? 
No. No access. Hmm. Huh? It's okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to understand how this works. We cannot go extra, extra small, but we can go... Extra small. Alright, so we're going to leave it at that. Padding. We can change the padding, so let's do... Padding. One. We can also make it so there's no padding at all, but I don't want that. There's a whole lot of other things you can do. Uh, we can mess with the background if we want, but we don't need to, so there's that. And if we were to give this thing more monitors, I'm pretty sure that it would just act normally. But for now, this is honestly the way that I like it. It looks fine. And yes, we do have uh, multiple workspaces, so if we were to open this up, I think I just crashed the workspace, though. Because, of course, I did. I wish this was more responsive inside the VM. I'm sorry. It was so much more stable on real hardware. You have no idea. But I can't record on real hardware. And it just it bugs the crap out of me. And all this is to do... Uh, desktop panel and feel. You know, they don't really do anything. And going here... can change it from small to large and everything like that but I, I wanted to show you the cool way and the occupancy like we can just invert it if we need to it's kind of cool that it just inverts uh, appearance uh, dark dark that's pretty cool So yeah, that lets you change the gap. Figure panel applets. Ooh, applets. See, this is cool. If I don't want workspaces, I'm not going to have workspaces. What is there? Dock applets? Okay, that's cool. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, there's Bluetooth. App. Oh my god, it exists. Ah, and we edit it. That's cool. So there is a start button. I did not know that. That makes things so much easier for when I go back into real hardware. Uh, what other applets are there? Is that it? Where did that go? I believe I just added a Bluetooth applet, but I guess it doesn't want to work. That's the panel. I guess we can't touch the dock at the moment. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Automatically hide panel. We can change its position on screen. That's cool. Choose your display. I only got one. What else is there? Dock. Yeah, there's no dock options. I mean, dock and panel should have the exact same options, but I guess they don't. That's pretty unfortunate. Okay. Uh, time and language. Set automatically. Great. Time zone. 24 hours. Didn't do anything. First day of the week. System and accounts. Firmware details are empty. Pretty bare bones here, man. This button just does all the neat little stuff. So that's Cosmic DE at the moment. It does run a whole lot better on real hardware. It's way more responsive, way less buggy. So I don't know why it's acting this way, but I'm glad that wallpapers work inside the VM. They did not on real hardware. I had to set them manually and that was a pain in the butt. But um, I'm glad that my Numix icons sort of carried over. That's cool, I guess. I wish I could change them, I guess, but you can't do that here yet. Uh, the clock looks a little bit weird. And what is with this pseudo app install thing here? 
What were they expecting of you? I don't think the clock is keeping up. Maybe it is. I don't know. But yeah, here's your audio interface. Uh, this isn't bugged out on real hardware, but this allows you to choose your stuff. And the font does work properly. This is for your laptop. So if you have integrated graphics, Nvidia graphics, hybrid graphics, compute, whatever, it's all there for you. It's built into the DE. Um, there's something I want to show you. They are planning on VRR, but you have to manually edit that in the display. And it's probably not going to open up. So this is how it goes. Dot local, share, state, and you'll see cosmic.com. And there's like a dot ron file in there. And in there that controls all of the... Uh, you call them the displays and you'll see an option for VRR you can turn it on hit save I don't know if it actually applies or not I cannot change refresh rates yet I don't know what's with that I thought that would be like a primary thing to do does Microsoft Edge open up yes it does but there's no icons so it's pointless web settings oh there we go so let me just show you real quick so CD Hmm. How do I, you know what, we're going to do it this way. So I'm still, I never actually, I'm not a terminal guy. I know how to use the terminal. We're going to do dot local. Then we're going to do share. We're going to do CD state. Unless it's in here, the so CD state LS CD cosmic comp LS and it's output Ron. So we're going to do nano output dot Ron. So as you can see, there's BRR and currently it's set to false. And you can set that to true. And once again, there's no way to set refresh rate. And I'm going to just hit save. And I'm going to hit X to exit. So, with that, this is the Cosmic DE. And uh, this is its current state. It's July. It might change in August, September, October. I'm sure there's loads of things to come. On real hardware, as I said, it's much more stable, much more responsive. Apps open up instantly. There's no weirdness unless you're using NVIDIA. NVIDIA acts a little wonky, but it's not like completely broken. I mean, clearly Pop! OS has a focus to make it work for NVIDIA. They're good people like that. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm sorry that this one's so long, but I want to show you from fresh OS installation to compiling and installing to running the DE because an all-in-one package. Do I recommend you use this? Sure. I have it installed as a secondary desktop environment, update it when needed, uh, report back if you have any bugs or issues. It always helps the developers. I mean, they want feedback. Uh, they're very community-driven. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video.